is your host, the Crypto Wonder from the Crypto Wonder Show. Let's get right into it. Hope you're doing well. Now, you probably looked at the title of this episode, and I titled it Post Traumatic Shitcoin Disorder. That's for a reason. I'm not trying to be crass or whatever, but we're all adults. And, you know, if the children are listening. Children, life is messy, but I'm not trying to be a part of that messiness. Just bringing some type of awareness from my own humble experiences. Okay? So what are we doing? You know, I'm going to just say this maybe one more time. I don't know if it's going to be the last time. It may not be the last time. I'm going to say, talk about my PTSD situation in crypto, right? It's related to my experience. I started in crypto in 2017, and you cannot imagine, unless you were there, how crazy. You you think crypto now is the Wild Wild West? Back then, it was a free for all. Free for all. We're talking about the beginning of 17 towards the end. The beginning of the 17 towards the end where it was just the bull market, the bull run. Because Bitcoin, let's say, for example, give or take, was hovering around $900 by December 2016 around. And it reached a high of 19 k by December 2017. So that whole entire year, I entered a space during the bull market, which means that anything and everything that anybody decided to throw money at, whatever coin you decide to acquire, whatever promise ICO that was being shilled back then that you probably utilized, you might have had a return on. You might have at least at minimum got your money back, got a return on investment at minimum. You could throw anything and make money back then in that time not even like it stopped happening but in that bull market period so it's 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 an understatement if i tell you that i gambled with about a hundred different things coins right tokens smart contracts icos like guess how many Turned out to be something back in 2017. Guess how many turned out to be something? Besides, my first encounter with it was Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin is Bitcoin, right? But then I bought into the whole smart contract life and the the, the beginnings of DeFi, you know, with Ethereum. And all these other EO, Ethereum killers were spawned. EOS, Tron, Bunch of different blockchains. Ant shares were already there. Well, Neo was already there, and and these others, you know, weird type of situations. I can't even remember them. Like, I can't even remember. You gotta, you gotta go do your research. It's not. It doesn't even matter at this point. But you know, look. so I was affected. I was impacted hard. 2018 brought in in the De- DeFi space, decentralized finance space, Ethereum space. Welcome to Proof of We Can'ts, right? Where the idea is you go get into this contract, you get taxed 10%. And if you want to leave the contract, you get taxed another 10%. So you're coming in, getting hit with 20%. And the 80% that remains there earns yield from other people doing the same thing. People selling, people buying, people transferring, holding on though. The more you hold on to the tokens and through the transactions and the volume of the transactions, of the tokens, of people coming in and out of the contracts, that earns a percentage on your coins. The problem with those tokens and hourglass and all that drama for me, in my humble opinion, was the fact that, you know, 
the cycles because they went through their own cycles too. Give it, you know, you have to think in 2018, that was a be that was January 2018 was the beginning of the bear market that lasted a long time. And that time period is when these hourglass contracts were introduced. So people made a lot of money during that time period and also lost it. Right. So it's weird. So it's, even in bear markets, you can make money if you know what you're doing or if you're lucky with some cases or you tapped in with the right people who can help you do what you do, because that's what happens to circles and groups of people. So going back to the hourglass thing, the problem with the hourglass, see, it seemed like to me what I thought how things should work wasn't how it was working. Right. In order to generate volume, people would just kind of like. Say, okay, let's, you know, folks would get together and then decide, listen, let's pump the contract. Pump. It's not even about let's do it, but it's something that this is how things, you know, people get excited to get into these things and and interested. And, oh, it's pump. Oh, people are buying. Oh, this and that. And these contracts. Oh, it's working. So folks like to chase. They chase pumps. That's what's going to happen in this bull market. The next bull market. Every bull market is the same. Like, it's been the same. Like, people just chase high prices. It's, it's, it's the reverse of how things rational. If you're thinking rational, it's just, that's not how it should go. But that's how many people prefer. I don't know why. It's just a sordid way of thinking. The hourglass for itself, by itself, was not keeping the interest of the people to keep coming back and using. Once they left these hourglasses, they didn't really return. Once they got their ROI, but then you have people who are stuck, who still haven't, right, been pleased with their returns, but they're stuck holding because if they sell, they're not getting anything back. They just get what they get. And the hourglass itself, by themselves, did not organically create volume or interest for people to keep buying into those contracts even though those contracts could be 100 percent legit many of them weren't because those things spawned an a, a huge problem where people copycat you're right they just duplicated they created you know uh uh, uh crappy contracts that had back doors and had just incentives for to enrich developers and promoters and and screw everyone else who came behind. I mean, look, man, that whole fiasco, the whole thing is, even if the contracts work, if the people, if, if you can't generate natural, organic volume without creating some type of manufactured pumps, it's it's going to be quiet like it is right now for those contracts and those communities. Sorry to say. I, I just know from experience, and it's just my my experience, and I'm not really downplaying and trying to insult whatever. I'm just talking about as from a from a a working operational point of view. Like it didn't. Some people even just say flat out, it's a zero sum game. Someone always ends up losing, right? Fast forward to here we are now. And during that time, even with the hourglass, I mean, I'm, you know, experimenting with other things too, other blockchains, other coins, other tokens. You know, folks are, have always come out with ideas about, you know, their, their, their idea and their promise is the absolute best. And you need to invest in it. It will convince you that everything they thinking that they thought of is something that you fundamentally need in your life right now. And if you don't have it, that's a problem. That's why you have to extend yourself by giving your energy, your money to them so that they can now pretty much work on your behalf or offer you the promise that they've been describing you. This is what they do. This is what they've done. And my my record has been 
garbage with that. Like two for, you know, you know, like two out of 200 might have been successful for me. No exaggeration. And those two are maybe holding Satoshis in Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's it. Not talking about specific anything. Like, it's crazy. It's it's not cool. It's not it's not good. So when I hear you know there's 150 projects waiting to get onto Pulse Chain, you know what? You're talking to somebody who's been there and done it. And many people in the community have been there and done it. Been in this for a very long time. Right? Who have been through the ups and downs. And the downs have been real, real, real downs. Real downs. Difficult, brutal moments. Where people have lost everything in crypto. Lost everything. People have left the communities, left crypto all alone, walked away from social media altogether, from different communities. Folks that used to be active disappeared. People have been harmed severely, psychologically, physically, emotionally, just scarred. That's why I say post-traumatic shitcoin disorder. It is what it is. That's why it's very, it's extremely hard for me and to trust anything anyone has to say. Doesn't mean I won't respect you, but if you're trying to sell me a promise, you're not, it's not really going to work that easy. It's not really, you're trying to sell me a promise and for me to fund your promise? No. Other people you find who will flock to it. That's them. That's fine. I'm talking about why I'm steadfast. I'm just completely focused on what I'm focused on. Because I'm tired of going through disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. 200, 300, 400 different projects and times of going through that. You can't imagine. And all that monetary energy, I could not, that, that was lost now. All that monetary energy was lost. There was no crypto police for me to call to come save my day. And there still isn't no crypto police to call. Can you imagine? There was, you know, some pseudo groups, you know, Telegram, these little whatever factions. They've never been able to help anybody recover 100%. I haven't seen it. Nothing. It's the Wild Wild West then, it's the Wild Wild West now. Has anybody recovered 100% in all of the, 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 the scams and debacle, fraud, garbage that, that, that rugged billions of dollars from the hands of the people last year? Go through the list just for last year alone. How many people have been recovered, have recovered, have been made whole? How many? So it is what it is. The people who have good intentions, which I don't really like going by intentions because of what they say. The road to hell was paved with good intentions. So, you know, but the folks, of the people who just have presence of mind, who really don't want to hurt people, right? More power to y'all because you have an arduous, very arduous, very difficult task lying in front of you because you will be faced with extreme criticism. And that's not to anyone's fault. It's just because the way things have un un unfolded and occurred in this space, there's some people that will never trust anything. And, you know, it's not that I won't ever trust anything. It's just that uh, you'll be hard-pressed to convince me that 
you're a good guy when I have data and proof on my end on how I've been, how many times I've been harmed and lost and haven't recovered until I started really learning about the mistakes I made in crypto, learning about what really self-autonomy is, self-custody. Yeah, I heard it, you know, with crypto, not your keys, not your coins. I get it. I get all of that. But understanding how holding the tokens will help you fare better, holding these coins has helped people succeed far more than trading and doing a bunch of other little crazy stuff. Leverage trade. Oh, you're going to throw it in this platform, farm this, liquidate, liquid, liquidity pool. You don't know what you're doing. And you're trying to teach people by offering them, you know, uh, courses and stuff like you barely know anything about crypto. All of a sudden you're an expert. Weird situations like that. Weird, 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 funny vibes that people give you talking fast and talking about a whole lot of nothing and want you to spend money. Good money, too, on their hot air. No, they could keep that. You could have that. You could have that. Because a person who's describing their dream and promise to you is not respecting your dream. Right? They're not respecting your vision. They're not respecting your mission and what you want to accomplish in life. You're in crypto to make money. You're in crypto so that you can uproot yourself out of some type of financial difficulty or despair. 100%. You're not in crypto to just consistently get rugged and scammed and have no one to turn to to help you recover your lost funds. No recourse. I don't care. There's no alphabet agency that's out here to help you recover anything. Period. Period. You, you might believe that they're doing something, but they're not doing anything in your best interest. They're doing If they're doing anything, it's to enrich themselves. Keep it real, right? Like, seriously. I, I you know. You can't stop. Like, none, nobody can stop people from coming onto a blockchain and making creating inventions and doing the, you know, introducing ideas and tools and stuff. No one can even prevent scams from occurring. Sad to say, if we could, they would, they would cease. This thing, these things continue. It's about being aware. This scams are happening in real normal life. People will call you robocalls and somebody call you and tell you that they're calling from the IRS and asking you for your, for your details, your deets. And you give them all your information, you just made it easy for them to just rob you of your identity and everything else and gave you a world of a nightmare now you got to deal with. This is happening in regular life. So what makes you think it's not happening in crypto where the, the, you talk about an asset class, fastest appreciating asset class known to man? Money? And you think people are not going to do the best they can to get that away from you, get that power away from you? You know, how close how close are we to the post chain mainnet launch? People just can't even help themselves. It's a you know, close, close, everything close, you know. Anytime, anytime, you know. And what are you gonna do if you sacrifice? You're just gonna just wait to receive to then give it away, to throw it away. Cause that's what that's what the wolves are waiting for. That's what the prey, the predators are waiting for, to feed on the prey. Right? To take advantage of unsuspecting, naive, new people, noobs. They make, you know, memes. They call them plebs and noobs and all these stuff. We all started as noobs in some shape, form, or fashion. Keep it real. Don't lie to yourself. Everybody was once a noob. You had to learn. You had to fall and, you know, learn, get up. But, you know. Some of us, we just don't learn until we have to a force where it's just like nowhere to go but up. Who else, who else can say, you know, that they have the similar track record that the founder of Hex and soon to be Pulse Chain and Pulse X has? 
when something new comes up that's better, that's comparable and even better, then that's going to be the talk as well. But until then, I'm not, I don't have the time and patience to be distracted 150 different ways from Sunday. Because we know thousands are going to come. You think 150 or something, there's thousands that gonna, that's going to come on board. The Pulse Chain is the exact copy, if not, not exact copy, but they're copying the entire system state of Ethereum. Introducing low fees. You, you, you like like the momentum, the the, the <laughs> this thing that's in front of us right here. We don't even understand the gravity about what's about to the brevity about what's about what's about to happen. And you just introduce logic and being rational. Like think about it. Like everything on Ethereum right now, you want to use, but you're frustrated because you got to pay an arm and a leg. Which digit are you going to give? Are you going to give your middle finger, your ring finger, your pointer, your pinky, your thumb to, 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 to allow a transaction to go through for these enormous gas fees or whatever? Pulse chain is going to be the exact opposite. They're stress testing it left and right. Going through all that and at the same time, if you sacrifice, you're just waiting, you're just waiting. As trying to be as calm and collected as you can be, but you know, you're also human. There's moments where you get this burst of emotion that goes through you because you're human, right? The emotion could be elation, you're happy, euphoria, and other times it could be, you know, just, you know, a little frustrated or whatever. It could be the opposite, you know what? And then when you finally receive what you receive without having any expectations, you're just going to give it away? No, nah, no time for that. That's just me. I've been through it too much. I've been through the crypto wars and battle scars. And it's a lot of it is all, most of it is psychological. Most of it is this mental combat and, and mental, right, right, uh, uh, jousting that we go through, psychological uh, battle that we do, talking ourselves out of opportunities. We consistently trick ourselves out of opportunities. That are just lying before us. We, 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 a lot of us often deviate. We say something and then we do something else. Oh, those days are over for me. Those days are all behind me. And I share this with people because I know I'm not the only person out here who's looking for a way up and out of a financial, um, financially strained situation. We all going through it. Especially middle class and under, you we going through it. I'm a working man. My 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 increase, my 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 you know fiat increase hasn't gone up. My increase has life has gone up. Life has increased, but my pay hasn't. And I gotta meet all my obligations. You don't you know? Forget about robbing people to pay Paul. I'm robbing people to pay Paul, Saul, uh, 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 Jimmy, uh, uh, Harry, uh, Suzanne, all that. It's not, it's not a joke. It's real. So I don't care about, you know, all this extra crypto, shiny, whatever. And it's just what it is. I feel that way because, yo, I, you know, whatever. My experience led me to this point. I'm not saying that everybody who jumps on Pulse Chain are going to be scammers, uh, you know, be villainous, be vampire, you know, vampirical or or just parasitic and just suck the economic power away from everybody, you know, newbies. That's what happens, though. Sorry, it's going to happen. It's not happening for me, though. 100%. 100%. I hope... More projects come that are successful than not. But I'm, as of right now, that's not even my focus. My focus is mainnet launch. My focus is understanding that 00 UTC, if you're mining hex, you're receiving rewards. And on top of that, this is another thing. You didn't even have to sacrifice for or, or uh, you know donate to receive a hedron. You're getting that. Off the strength of locking up your tokens of mine, mine hex. You're getting that daily too, zero, zero UTC. That has a value in and of itself that you could also use to acquire and, and do different things with it and also acquire another token 
that you didn't necessarily have to donate or sacrifice. That works for me. That works. Icosa. That works. That works. That's just me, though. Because you're not, you know, asking me to just give this, give that, give this, and give that. Come on, man. Because that does take away from what's really important. It does distract the people from what really counts. Really. Let's be for real. Because folks, they're taking advantage. There's no stimulus checks anymore, right? The dollar is, is being debased heavily. Inflation through the roof. These people are meeting today. To decide is you know inflation gonna continue or whatever they're gonna do craziness cost of living out of control all kinds of stuff taking place so people gonna take advantage know when you're being taken advantage of know when that's happening and you think you see something now wait till the bull market it's gonna be out of control that's why you gotta stay committed you gotta stay uh, basically just focus on what's going on and be balanced have some self control and emotional control. So that you don't lose, unnecessarily lose what you worked so hard to gain. On that note, everybody, like, share, and subscribe. If you rock with me this long, you're the winner. I'll catch you all on the next one. Take care.